Have you ever wondered why the octave is split into 12 notes? Well, in the beginning there wasn't any keyboard. Basically, caveman would sing a note, and cavewoman would sing a note, and she thought it was the same note that the man sang, but in fact they were an octave apart. Her note was twice the frequency of the man's note, but they sounded good together. Now, from a mathematical point of view, the reason the notes sound pure or good together is that the waveforms quickly line up. And because the higher note is twice the frequency of the lower note, they sound good together. The frequency ratio is two to one. This note is twice the frequency of this one. This doubling in frequency means that the notes on the keyboard are not spaced linearly. They're logarithmically spaced which causes all sorts of confusion when we try to divide the octave up into other notes. So let's start with our basic start note C and only consider this octave and the notes between them. Now our start note could be any note and in fact what I'm about to tell you would work for any note. But let's just stick with C for the time being. Now we saw how notes an octave apart sound good together. What about notes in between the octave? How do we get those to sound good together? Well, we find that they also have common simple frequency ratios, like two to one. Let's see what some of those simple ratios could be. So let's look at some simple ratios. Two over one or two to one would be two times. 3 over 2 or 3 halves would be 1 and a half times. So let's make all the possible ratios we can using the numbers 1 to 8. Now we're not going to use the number 7 because it's just a bit too awkward and prime. So here's a table of 42 fractions using all the numbers 1 to 8. Now some of these fractions are the same as each other, so let's highlight those in red. 2 quarters is obviously the same as 1 half, 4 over 2 is the same as 2 over 1 or 2, so let's get rid of those. We only want frequencies between these two notes, so 1 times this frequency and twice that frequency, which would be this note. So we're looking for ratios between the values of 1 and 2. So if we take out all those ratios that are greater than 2 and less than 1, here shown in pink, which is most of them, we're left with only 6 ratios using the numbers 1 to 8, which have a value between 1 times and 2 times. Let's put these ratios in size order with the smallest first and their decimal equivalents. So they range between 1.2 times and 1.66 times. So in terms of musical notes, what do these ratios mean? What do they equate to? Well, let's look at the ratio three over two, one and a half times. What note would be one and a half times the frequency of the C note? Well, we'll call this note G dash. This is because it's not quite the same frequency as the G we've come to love and know on our keyboard. It's just that that note is the note that's nearest to the frequency of the real note of G. OK, so let's have a look at another example. How about a ratio of 5 over 4? What note would be 5 over 4 or 1.25 times the frequency of that C note? We'll call this note E dash. Because again, it's not quite the same frequency as the real E on our keyboard. So if we carry on and multiply the frequency of the C note with each of these six ratios, we get these notes. So by using simple ratios, we found six notes between the two C notes. Now we know when each of these six notes are played together with the C note, they all sound good as their frequency ratios are exact and pure 
and they are given the name consonant notes. If we plot the frequencies of these notes on a graph, we can see that they sort of line up. And the interesting thing here is there seems to be gaps that could be filled in with other notes. We've got one that could go in there, two in here, and perhaps two down there. Well, if we add these extra notes in red, you will notice that their frequency ratios are a bit awkward. They're not exactly very good, and some websites actually disagree on what they should be. But you get an idea of the fact that these notes are not pure and don't sound nice when played together with the C, and they are therefore called dissonant notes. If I play some of these dissonant notes, they sound harsh or jarring, and they certainly don't sound as smooth as the consonant notes. If you look at a table of the consonant and dissonant notes, the consonant in green and dissonant in red, you can see that they're sort of symmetrical around the middle note, which would be F sharp in the octave. Now, if we exclude this top C here, which forms part of the next octave, there are 12 notes in this music scale. Now, making a scale of notes using a frequency ratio is called just intonation. And this is how the music scale was first developed, between the octaves. But to understand the full story, we need to introduce equal temperament, and I'll cover that in the next video.